Oh my gosh, USU family, my beloved listener. I'm so excited. This is such a gift for me. And I purposely wanted this to be the first episode of this brand new year of 2023. I am so delighted to introduce you to the Astro Twins. And I just found out all three of us are Sages. So get ready for some uplifting, optimistic conversations, I think. I am so thrilled. I want to introduce you to Ophira and Tali Ajut. They are the best-selling authors, speakers, and astrology experts. These identical twin sisters are the co-founders of the global brand Astro Style, which reaches millions of loyal readers around the world. Since 2009, they've been in-house astrology columnists for Elle magazine and have published 13 books. 13 books. I <laughs> my head around that, ladies. Oh my God. Might be a few more now, actually. Oh, yeah. It's more than this. Oh my gosh. All right. Major media, including the New York Times, have been featured, uh, have featured the twins who have appeared on air for Good Morning America, the Today Show, and Sirius XM. I'm sure others as well. In August of 2022, the Esther twins debuted as the ast astrologers and matchmakers of Amazon Prime's Cosmic Love. Make sure you get watch that. The first streaming reality dating show to use astrology. So cool. Ophira, who otherwise is known as Ophi and Tali have done workshops, talks, and trainings for Nike, Condé Nast, The Still, Michael Kors, and at universities nationwide and many other organizations and companies. They've collaborated, collaborated with major, major brands, including Coach, HBO Max, and Valspar. And these sisters have red charts for celebrities, including Beyonce, Lover, Carly Kloss, mm -hmm. Emma Roberts, and Alicia Keys. And here's what I'm so excited about. Today, we are going to be chatting, the three of us, about this year to come from an astrological perspective. And I got to tell you both, I have been so excited for this conversation, <laughs> waiting to talk to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So, so, so happy to have you here. We're so uh, excited we're to be here and talk about the calendar turn. It's one of our favorite topics because this is that time of year where you actually do have that sense that you can start fresh no matter what. It's like, here we go. Let's leave that behind and step into this, this new space. And, and astrology is the ultimate roadmap for that we've found, which is why we've been doing this for so long. Amazing. I think, could we do a super quick, like, how did you get into this work and then sure. maybe lead into like, what, what are we leaving behind with last year? But I'd love to just, for my listeners, I know I, I'm, I'm assuming everyone has heard of you because who hasn't, but in case they don't know your story, like <laughs> I never you, know. Yeah. How'd you find yourself in astrology? Yeah. I mean, you know, we as identical twins, I think since the womb have been conditioned to be tuned into another person. That's what's normal for us. So we've always been really curious about what makes everyone else tick. It was just, you know, and birthdays because we shared one and, you know, so we had a paper route when we were 11 and 12 and we would read the horoscope and would stuff the little coupons in the middle of the newspaper, the Detroit news. So that, that started the curiosity. Then my college boyfriend gave me a full birth chart as a gift for when we were about 21. Which of course college. I grabbed and read as soon as she Yeah, was <laughs> we essentially have the same <laughs> chart because we're four minutes apart. And it was like, oh, because we knew we were Sagittarii, but, <laughs> but we were like, you know, yeah, this really does sound like us. But then when I got this 30 page booklet with all these descriptions, I was like, oh my God, this is truly me in so many uncanny ways. So we set about figuring out how it worked, teaching ourselves through books and a little piece of software, doing our friends charts and just, it became, you know, we didn't realize it, but we were so lucky in our early twenties to have found this tool pre-internet, it was in the nineties, uh, because, you know, you go through a lot when you're at that age and in that decade. And while we were like really getting into the identity politics and issues and healing that you go through when you start into adulthood, this is this very proactive roadmap telling us like, okay, deal with whatever family stuff you might, you know, have to process as you strike out on your own, but 
hey, here's also who you could become. Here's this positive human potential, you know, outlet you can plug into. To and God. honestly, you know, it's like, it is definitely was an accidental career. We both went to the University of Michigan. We studied fine art. But while we were there, we started a women's magazine called Hughes, which stood for Hear Us Emerging Sisters. And this was in the early 90s. It was, um, <clears throat> its purpose was to create, you know, a expanded limitless um, beauty standard to help women to see ourselves as beautiful no matter what, you know, and, mm -hmm. and powerful and have a voice, you know, basically it was an intersectional feminist magazine that, you know, but, you know, that, that word was 30 around. years too soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But from that, you know, from that, you know, experience, uh, we wound up like having, you know, uh, Rebecca Walker, Alice Walker's daughter and Gloria Stein, I'm on our board and we would speak at colleges. But the group of women who worked on that with us, we were a motley crew from all walks of life and cultures and backgrounds. We all got into astrology together and things just started happening, you know, it was like the ultimate unifying language. And someone who actually worked on that on our magazine uh, gave us our first job at Teen People. And it was kind of like, okay, from feminist media to astrology, how does that happen? But it actually, for us, it was kind of the same, you know, thing. It's like, you, you know, define, it was, it's also about identity politics, you know, it's like, once you start to unpack Maybe without the politics, though, without the politics, yeah, nice about like astrology identity, yeah. Like once you start to unpack your astrological chart, which is we can talk about what that is for people who don't know. Most people just know their sun sign, like we're all Sagittarius, but the every single one of the planets and the moon is in a different part of the sky and connecting to one of the twelve zodiac signs. Only someone born the same minute in the same time zone will share this unique chart with you. And me and Ophi have a tiny bit of difference in ours, very subtle, but, you know, um, as you learn that it's, it's just more, more exploration of who you are, finding your power, finding new ways to connect that are authentic for you. So it all sort of blurred in one thing blurred into the next and, you know, here we are 25 years later, you know, we just never stopped from teen people, which was very random first job, but it was kind of fun too. in the aughts. Yeah. Love it. Ah, you know, what's so, so amazing to me is kind of just how this, how this started. And I see this a lot when, it, it wasn't, you didn't plan. I, I, I don't think, it doesn't sound like you planned to be the Astro Twins and to get into this. No, story. not at all. Yeah. It found you. It, it, it just sounds like it happened very naturally and that, you know, it, it blossomed through you, this, this yeah. greater purpose. Yeah. Although I think we wouldn't maybe have allowed it as much if we didn't know our chart and our sign and mm. that kind of thing. So it did make it easier to be like, okay, you know, sure. We went to university of Michigan and paid our tuition and studied design and art, but this, this is not a mistake. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was the most shocking revelation of the chart that Calvin, her boyfriend did for us, I say, uh, <laughs> little did you know, two, pre two presents in one. Um, we have Mercury, Moon, Mars, and Venus in Scorpio. So, you know, when we were young girls, we would always like reading books about ESP or, you know, anyone who had like, at, like we did a we did a Super presentation natural. in fifth grade on witchcraft. I found like this popsicle stick gallows that I made <laughs> yeah. by my tub. Of this. I was like, what was that? What happened there? <laughs> you know, past life stuff maybe. But, you know, we were always, so the that explained a lot. And, and it kind of gave us that, like Ophi said, that, that green that light. Affirmation, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. explore the woo. Yeah. Let's, I want to look a little bit at, you know, astrology, you, I love what you said that it's the ultimate roadmap and the ultimate proactive roadmap. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we start with a little bit around astrology and going through just some of the basics, the moon, the planets, and, and then we, we move into like 
all right, what the heck, what is happening this year? Because right. I know, I just want to give a little, we'll, we'll start with a little Absolutely. foundational. Yeah. Um, so to kind of give that context, well, I think of astrology as the ultimate permission slip and roadmap. So there's two approaches. There's the personal astrology, which is kind of the deep dive into how you're wired. And then there's the timing astrology, predictive astrology, like why did this happen this year? What, what's happening next year? So you can really use it both ways. And I think both are very effective, but um the first is your own unique birth chart and an astrological sign. And that's based on the time, date, and location that you were born. Mm -hmm. And it's a map of where the planets were related to where you were born on this planet. So it's not, it's not the constellations. You haven't changed zodiac signs. It's like if you were lying on your back, looking up at the sky and you just drew a circle and you know, mapped out where all the planets were relative to you. That's your chart. That's your map. Um, we call it the three-part puzzle because there's the planet and then the zodiac sign that it's in and then the houses, which get very complex. People learn them, but if you're just new to astrology, don't overwhelm yourself with that just yet. Um, we say that the planets, each planet is like an actor in the movie of your life. Or if you're someone who's into family systems therapy, uh, internal family systems like each each planet represents maybe a part of your psyche and your nature and then the zodiac sign that it was in meaning which part of the sky overhead which has been sliced up into 12 pieces of cosmic pizza um you know which part was it visiting when you were born so that's if the planet is the actor then the zodiac sign it's in is the role it's playing or the costume it's wearing and then if you if you get into the houses, those are the each one of the 12 houses represents a different area of your life. So that would be where that actor in that role or costume would be performing that scene. Maybe it would be, you know, at home, a family movie, maybe it would be a rom-com if it was in a the seventh house of love or the fifth house. So you put this whole puzzle together and these parts just like the parts of your psyche don't always fit together neatly. That's what, that's why I say astrology is a permission slip because you are not going to find a neatly put together package. You're going to find complexities and contradictions and some strengths and some real weaknesses that, you know, where, where you're challenged as a soul, as a person to, you know, learn something new to compensate for weakness, whether it's learning how to allow others to support you or to empower them to do so effectively or to, you know, pick up a skill and challenge your own limitations. Um, and then you have natural strengths. You learn to embrace, adopt, you get the validation to do that, but not to rely on too much at the expense of your own growth. So it becomes this really cool system where you, you know, can, you know, develop consciousness and become a more elevated soul and human. And that's what I love about it. And by the way, you don't have to lie on the floor and map things out. We have a handy <laughs> calculator that you can do a chart for free at astrostyle.com slash birth chart, one word birth chart. And even if you don't know your time of birth, um, just put in noon, you may have a couple things that are not 100% accurate, but most of it will be and you'll just, you know, and it gives you a little printout and short, you know, thing, we have all kinds of things to explore and expand into if you want to learn more. But yeah, astrocell.com slash birth chart. It's, it's worth doing. And you know, if, if nothing else, your moon sign is a really good place to start because the sun is how you shine in the world. And the moon is the sun's companion. It's the, the parts of you that really show up in intimate relationships or as people get to know you better. So, um, you know, it's often like sometimes only your family sees your moon sign. I know you have you have an Aries moon and we have a Scorpio moon. So you're probably a lot more live out loud, wear your feelings on your sleeve, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like immediate your emotions are more Aries being the first sign of fire sign. It's very yeah. they're immediate. You're a fight, your sun isn't a fire sign. See, our Scorpio moon, it's like 
oh yeah, everything's great, Sagittarius. And then you go home and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I really think? Let me take a minute. Yeah, I've just really learned to like not jump to the uh, Sagittarian enthusiasm without doing the internal check. So that's how the moon sun can really, can be a good inner compass to check in with. Those two things alone can help you hack a lot of being human because Mm. there's so much more and it makes you curious about people. I mean, it's so easy to just, well, maybe (laughs) if you have as much Scorpio in your chart as we do, but it's so easy to be sort of suspicious about people or like find the worst in them, but it, it gives you this natural sense of curiosity about everyone. So you make a lot more friends when you like astrology, I think. So great. Oh, I love this. I'm like, please keep, please keep explaining. And I think <laughs> everyone can do this. So you can get, go, to, and we'll have the link as well. Get your birth chart. And, you know, to start, I love this because even just to start with your sun and your moon, um, can you, I know many people get into the whole like trilogy, the moon, the sun, the rising. And rising. what is the, can you share what that, what that rising is about? Yeah, the rising is, um, it changes every two hours and it is the, the zodiac part of the sky. There was once a constellation there that is on the Eastern horizon at your moment of birth. So, um, the, the actual astrological chart, it looks like a clock. So this would be the nine o'clock point on the clock on that circle. And it, it really sets the beginning of your chart. The only thing about it is that you have to know your time of birth to get that accurate. So it's kind of exclusionary, you know? So, you know, I mean, Vedic astrology and whole sign astrology and, uh, you know, a lot of things like that really rely on that hour of birth. But we like tropical placidus, even though, you know, there still relies on that for a chart. Any If you want to do the rising sign, um, you know, but what it represents in the real world, which is what really matters here, is kind of the first impression you make. It's like your hello, your ta-da. It's also um, your body is sort of regulated by that. We can actually, sometimes I'll guess someone's sign only to find out that I've guessed they're rising. Like we're Capricorn rising and Capricorn rules the teeth and the bones and, you know, People, I mean, we did have braces, but get a lot of compliments on our teeth. I don't know. <laughs> or comments. Yeah, yeah, one of our astrologer good friends, Stephen Forrest, says the rising sign is how you dawn on other people, which I like that description. So it's mm, like, so good. yeah, he's very poetic. So, um, Love that. yeah. And it's also kind of what you're maybe first attracted to, you know? So I know you've told us you haven't just revealing your whole chart, if you don't mind uh, me sharing your rising sign, but I should ask permission. You have an Aquarius (laughs) rising, which we thought we had originally when we looked it up in a book and then we learned time zone and location mattered. So we're disappointed to find a way to Capricorn rising because it sounded so much more fun to get the one you did. (laughs) Uh, oh my gosh, that's hysterical. I guess it was the two hour window, right? I just, I guess it. so. I mean, yeah, exactly. Were yeah. you born around noon? On the, yeah. 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 We're born at 10 a.m. So, yeah. Wow. There you go. See, two hours later in December, or are you November? When November, but, uh-huh, but still same. close yeah. enough, still, still the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. This, what I love so much, and you know, you were saying this, Ophi, before, both of you have been saying this, that there's, it's like, it it can help put this puzzle together. And I have to say, it's been very comforting. I know for me to be able to, I have like a book on Sagittarius, (laughs) although Mm -hmm. what we're saying is it's not our only, that's not the, that's, that's one piece of the puzzle yet. It was helpful to really, and I know, you know, we're all individuals and unique. However, there are, it's funny. I just, anyone that I meet in this sign, I'm like, yep, yep. I can just feel it. And so, you know, when people do the birth chart, um, I'm assuming you kind of go, it it explains the houses and the planets. What, well, let me save that question because I want to get to this year and then what maybe each sun sign can kind of have a sense about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's first talk about what we're leaving, what we just left behind. <laughs> In 2022. Yeah. Every yeah. year we write a new book, uh, a yearly horoscope guide that gets bigger and bigger. They've been in 
uh, print on demand, I think for the last five or six years, we're on our 11th year now doing this. And we always think maybe next year we won't, but then we're like, no, it's too important. It's just like what it does for people to have this compass to set the template for the year ahead. It's just, it's such a relief to know because, oh, well. every, you know, so we called 2022 the year of the new abnormal. Um, actually, 2020, we predicted a black swan event in that, which was which we weirded ourselves out with. Um, <laughs> but Ophi dubbed the 20 this this decade the boring 20s, you know, because a lot of like Pretty pandemic, I didn't know. I was like, eh. well, it was kind of boring, you know. We were stuck at home, you know. It's like That's pretty there was a lot. The decade <laughs> began like thunk, you know, and there was this really we're we're moving out of a lot of um planets being in capricorn for the last couple of years and capricorn rules the patriarchy it rules the economy it rules these very like sort of you know not necessarily authoritative if not autocratic governments it rules corporations so a lot of things that have been you know the Hustle culture is a Capricorn unleashed kind of energy. So we're moving out of that, 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 so, but we're still suspended in this, like uh, Ophi has said, uh, made a really great analogy too about, she said the world is having an iOS update and it's like the wheel is still spinning and we're waiting for <laughs> it to happen. And so 2022, we call it the year of the new abnormal because it, it was a year where, you know, there was some movement through Aquarius, which is, a, you know, social media and scientific developments. But basically, you know, the gist of it is, is like, we're not going back, people. Everyone, you know, back in, you know, in 2020, we could still say, oh, I wish things would go back to, I can't wait till everything goes back to normal. Well, that normal ain't happening. And now we have to adjust, yet we don't know what we're adjusting or adapting to. So there's been, this has been a year where we've had to like be with 2022, where we've had to really be with and sit with things. The the lunar nodes, which are connected to the eclipses, were happening in Scorpio and Taurus. So Scorpio is this very mystical, esoteric, the hidden realm, spiritual energy where we had to be with what we could not see. It also rules reproductive, big issue of the year, reproduction, reproductive rights. And then Taurus rules the body, the terrestrial realms, the things like money <laughs> and the economy. Yeah, body, they're both the money signs. So it's just this... The year of the new abnormal was about integrating and sitting with a lot of people I know, you know, have talked about processing trauma. That's been a big thing. We've been able to tap into that, but like, now what, what do we do with all this? We've real, you know, it's been our best efforts to try to force and ram things through didn't happen, but a lot of people were like, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm quietly quitting here. Mm. And so because I think that that whole realization that doing things the old way is just, it's it's sort of corrupt. I don't know if, Ophi, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. I mean, we had these simultaneous polls to really go technological and then also like to create community and take care of each other and ourselves. Like two equal forces were running in 2022, because it was a year of the water tiger in lunar astrology, but then it was also a six year in numerology, which is about community and nurturing and caring, whereas the water tiger and what, I mean, that alone, the tiger is very like unpredictable and shaking things up and pulling the rug out from under you, which is why it was so new abnormal for people especially too I was like well nobody's coming to give you an answer so start playing around with a few things yourself I've been noticing even like an, just an everyday example like being in New York City the the normal of like the things that used to be exciting like restaurants and bars and clubs it's, that is boring it's like boring in the tw in the 2020s to people it's just like okay another restaurant put a booth out in the street, yay, dining. It's like people, you know, but then 
uh, yeah, people are having to like, we don't know what to do for, to meet and gather. It's like, how about put your phone down? Don't take a picture of your food and have a conversation or something. So it's like, in a weird way, it's getting us back. Oh, oh, people are interesting, not their, their reels. You know? well, to add to that, um, we are wrapping up a cycle that began literally with the pandemic. So we're talking about planets being the actors in the movie of our lives saturn is the planet of restriction it's the butt kicking personal trainer planet so wherever it lands the whole world is going to be going through boot camp sort of or like really having to reconfigure the way we deal with things and literally march of 2020 like i think march 21st it was like almost the week, it was the same week that lockdowns began. Saturn, planet restriction, moved into Aquarius, the sign of socializing, community, and technology for the first time in nearly 30 years. And it's been there ever since. It's there till March 7th of 2023. So that, I mean, Saturn and Aquarius is basically social distancing, you know, it basically, but look at how we learned how to use Zoom and remote work, like we're using technology, if we went to scramble to figure out how to use it, but we found new ways, some people would even say we're communing more globally, you know, like, than we than ever before, and it's true, you know, like, I, I realize I feel like I'm with people all day and I'm like, wait, there's no one here but me at the office, you know, <laughs> but, and so that's Saturn and Aquarius as well as, but also, you know, we, we're seeing Twitter implode, we're seeing social media go, you know, through all these, I don't know what the next few months are going to bring, but we're, mo- we're ending this, we've really had to figure out how to be communal, how to be humans, how to use technology, but first, we've really, I mean, I think we've seen the limitations of that progress. And so again, wrapping up 2022, so ready to be done with Saturn and Aquarius, it has been no fun at all. So <laughs> yeah. When do we, so when do we get out of that? <laughs> March, March 7th. March 2023. Oh, oh my, yeah. my son's birthday is. Oh, yeah. yeah right, okay. Right then. So yeah. where does it go? Where does Saturn go then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it always goes somewhere where there's always a Saturn. Um, yeah. Saturn goes into Pisces, which is going to be interesting too. I mean, <laughs> Saturn is actually one of the, the is the ancient ruler of Aquarius, so it it was more comfortable there. Saturn and Pisces. Saturn is the the planet of boundaries, and Pisces is about the dissolving of boundaries. So it is going to be a mm. friction point. You know, if you look back to ninety six, you know. 95, 96, um, anyone born that year is going to be having their first Saturn return. Um, I think also in 94 too, it was there. So sorry, of course it was. Saturn in Pisces though has brought interesting developments around, uh, you know, drugs, vaccine uh, use, even psychedelics as, you know, but it it's also been a very restrictive time for spirituality and people, you know, so, I, you know, Saturn is about what's visible and Pisces is about what's invisible. So again, we're going to keep navigating these. We can expect another year of, you know, paradoxes. We're calling 2023, however, the year of what if. So mm-hmm. rather than being like, you know, oh my God, I don't know what's coming. We're never going back to, no-. it's like the question of what if we have planets, Jupiter, which is kind of this bountiful counterpart to Saturn yeah. um, is going to be in Aries, the very first sign of the Zodiac until May 16th. And then it goes into Taurus, which is going to be good for money in the economy. So everyone just relax, relax. Some good news may be coming in, you know, in May, but there's a lot of novel ideas that are going to come in novel solutions on I mean I was we wrote about you know nuclear energy being something that would be explored when Saturn went into Aquarius and now they're already finding that it may have some abilities to help to create green energy faster and that so I think we're going to see a lot of the year of what if is a year where you can you can use what if one of two ways you can use it in that like hand wringing oh no ah," you know or 
what if we did this? What if we could reverse, you know, I, I think that's all, what if we could clean the plastic out of the water even faster with this, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of rapid developments happening that kind of shock us this year in 2023. Yeah. Pisces also rules hospitals, Aquarius rules public spaces, um, and Saturn creates new structures. So I feel I think I feel like those those restaurant booths on the street are so Saturn and Aquarius. I think we're gonna see, and Pisces also rules old age, and as more boomers are are aging and needing elder care, that and you know, as much as they get a bad rap. They um, have Pluto and Leo. They were born in that generation. So they, they have a sense of entitlement that is actually as obnoxious as it can be sometimes. It's also making the world a cushier place for some people to go through illness and aging and even death. So I know that sounds weird to call it cushy, but, um, but they are um, sort of paving the way for that. And I think we're definitely going to see some new, you know, I th- there are there are now like medical clinics that look like spas and wellness centers and that kind of thing. So I think we can really expect in 2023 to start to see some very interesting developments there and also people investing in that, too. So Yeah, Saturn in Pisces is also going to help us take um, mental health even more seriously, our psychological health. Pisces rules the subconscious. So, um, and also, yeah, aging, like Opie said. Yeah. And, and we we like to say, like, is death going to be, are we going to see the end of death or death as we know it? Like, I mean, obviously our bodies die, but um, I remember a Pisces, uh, the Pisces author, Anita Morjani, who, um, mm. her book was called, she was dying like, to be me, dying to be me. Yeah. She had like all these near death experiences and came back and just like, get ready for a lot more of that coming up in 2023 mm. and like being maybe taken seriously and even quantified or measured by the traditional kind of scientific mm. community a little bit mm. images of them. Hey, my friend, I'm so grateful to be here with you in this USU community and podcast. And I just am pausing for a minute because I wanted to share in case you didn't know this and you wanted some further support for this new year to help you map out and plan your goals, your dreams, your bigger vision to get clear on that and then to really have accountability and support and coaching, how to take action, how to really live out those goals in this year to come. I would love to help you if you are looking for some extra support. I've just opened up. I have three spots available for three new clients and would love to support you if that's of interest. If so, connect with me further. We can chat about what it would like look like to work together. Just go to julieriesler.com slash chat. Again, julieriesler.com slash chat. We'll make sure to put the notes below. But again, would love, love, love to support you, my friend, if there's any way that I can be here to be of service and help you in creating and designing your best year yet. All right, back to the show. Would this also mean, and this is just kind of off the cuff question, but for those who are experiencing greater intuition, psychic connection, the veil lifting, is that I've been sensing that myself just and and hearing mm-hmm. that is it, does that have anything to do with what you're talking absolutely about? yeah pisces yeah. is all about those the hidden realms the part mm-hmm. you know i think we only use like one or two percent of our of our minds of our brains like so there's a whole lot going on going on in it's there ha- yeah i think the scorpio eclipses are really awakening that but saturn and pisces is going to make it more quantifiable people are going to start wanting to measure it start actually like what really happens when we are you know and and we're going to get more science and empirical data around that and you may see like more like saturn also rules like experts and things that you earn through putting in time and paying dues so you know you may see the mystical services world go through some certifications or kind of you know maybe almost there's too much demand supply to meet the demand sometimes. So maybe 
a few more regulations or not that that's a good thing, but Saturn kind of comes in and does that. So, and of course, Pisces rules the seas and water. So a lot of attention is going, you know, like we are obviously in a mega water crisis with just, you know, like droughts happening in some places, just weather change and flooding on the coastlines and hurricanes. So I think, you know, the next three years, again, there's a lot more to be taken. There's no like, oh, that's not happening. Saturn is like in your face. But you know, on the- dams and those uh, waters, you know, Saturn rules architecture and structures and barriers. So, you know, I was in New York, luckily not in the city during Hurricane Sandy. And we just, we had such outdated barriers for the, you know, the the Hudson River and it's just the ocean and everything. So- it's definitely a time to get serious about that. If, um, mm. yeah, those repairs and builds. So. Wow. This is, uh, and, and I'm assuming since we were just in a six year, this would be a seven year. Yep. yep. And yep. seven is a lot. It kind of echoes exactly what Saturn and Pisces is about. Seven is about bringing science and spirituality together. It's about making the invisible visible. So there's, there's a real resonance there as well. And we have, you know, Jupiter going in Aries for the first, you know, almost half of the year is going to bring a lot of, you know, fun. People just are like, are just like, I need to live. I need to feel my life force energy again. I mean, even if you just look at fashion and what's coming back for like New Year's Eve, like, it's just like whether or not people are going to be able to go out or not depending on the virus load in their area, but it's just like fashion is becoming colorful, flashy, Y2K, Paris Hilton, ridiculous again, which is very, you know, just ta-da, look at me. But Jupiter and Taurus, which happens, which will go on for an entire year, starting May 16th, is sort of bringing this also a little bit more, um, I think it's going to be very reparative for work and money and people are going to find a new way to, you know, be entrepreneurial and enterprising or, or it's going to reform the way we do our offices. It's already happening with the Taurus eclipses, like the workplace is being reformed, Mm -hmm. but um, there's all, I, Betty Crocker may make a unfortunate comeback. I saw that the one of the the daughter from the Duck Dynasty is doing these these like women's groups where she's preaching these old school values of what it is to be a woman. And Jupiter and Taurus is historically, you know, it can bring back bring back that the uh, binding apron string. So resist, resist. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Make right. yourself happy, ladies. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that's the whole point of this whole idea with the USTU, right? It's like, don't just go into what you're seeing out there, go within and, and, and be like, speak your truth and be yourself. And mm-hmm. yeah, don't such just- a good name. It's what astrology ultimately is best for, like, mm-hmm. because most people, and I'm sure this happens as they learn from you, like, one of my favorite quotes is that advice is uh, what people hear when they already know the answer, but wish they didn't. But, (laughs) but at the same time, I think most people know who they are and on the positive spin on that, they want to be validated. So you already like have a sense who your youest you is and the chart puts language to it and kind of lights away, builds a trail there where you you can be like, oh yeah, there's that, there's that, there's that. Because I think that humans are our own biggest blind spots. We really can't see ourselves the way others do. So we can get that little bit of objective distance through a description of yourself or whatever coaching and guidance that you lead people on. It's like, oh, you know, kind of like Dorothy finding her way back to Kansas. It was there all along. Yeah. You just needed someone to take you down the road. Mm-mm. Oh, I love that. I, I'm curious with, I know that that we're focusing on the sun signs, but I thought it might be fun if we have the time to just do a quick overview. Like if you are a Capricorn and just go through the 12, 
Um, I even have a little cheat sheet. I can tell people what they're leaving behind and what they should set their (laughs) sights on if you want. I can run right through it for you. So I love it. Actually, really quick before you do that, the one last thing, when you said this is the year of what if, I love that you remind, you're reminding us, you know, what if can be like possibility, can be dreaming, can be so, you know, I'm just going to say this out loud because part of me is like, oh gosh, but let's, let's look at that from what if we could have this green energy that, mm-hmm. you know, it's what if, you know, whatever the, the illness you have or the, or this, the, the, the trauma that you've been, what if that could be just completely melt away? What if you could, you know, find a whole new energy within you? What if, I mean, you know, we can look at that for days, but there's a yeah. way to look at that. That's empowering. And I love that you're mm-hmm. saying that because I think, you know, you don't even want to imply that someone shouldn't do healing work or look at their trauma or should rush through it. And at the same time, we're all sages here, the sign of potential and, and, you know, human, you know, in our quest to do right by mental health, which we've done a great job of, I think that we've also unplugged ourselves from our own curiosity and potential by accident. So what I love about astrology and coaching and those sorts of these tools is like, please explore all those things that you need to, that you went through and put those in perspective. But, you know, sometimes you dig yourself in so deep that you're like, okay, now I'm just focusing and I'm recycling that not simultaneously creating an, you know, you want to create an on ramp, on ramp and an off ramp from the trauma and the pain that you're looking at. And I think your astrology chart is like, Hey, I could venture out. I could, you know, like you, cause the thing is you want to help other people who have gone through it. Once you gain that perspective, you can't rush the process. But so the year of what if is a time to also be curious about looking at things from as many different angles as you can. Um, and also like getting, I think it's important, um, especially with Saturn being the domain of experts and Pisces being mental health. It's really important. It's an important year to work with a trained professional therapist if you're going through real trauma or get into a recovery program or something. It's like self-diagnosing and DIY healing are not going to be the way to go this year (laughs) coming up. So, and you know, one thing we should, before we, you know, hop into the signs, we should also talk about relationships because there's a lot of, you know, there is, there's the you you and the we we, that's also going to be a big thing because yeah. So, um, the, the lunar South known where the eclipses are happening. It's this point in the sky is moving into Libra, the sign of marriage and partnership on July 17th for all the way till January 11th, 2025. So basically a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a real kind of talk about reinventing and remixing, you know, a kind of a look on, you know, there's, like how, what's my impact on others? How do I create partnerships that fit this new world that we're in? You know, it does almost, we've almost outgrown the need for each other unless we have, you know, a clearly defined thing we're working on together, you know, but what about just the the beauty of human interaction? We also have Venus, which is a planet of love, turns retrograde right smack dab in the middle of the summer, which is annoying if you have a wedding planned. So Venus turns retrograde every, every year and a half. So um, it'll be in Leo, the most romantic sign for four whole months from June 5th to October 8th. But from July 22nd to September 3rd, it'll be in this retrograde phase where it actually goes from being an evening star. I mean, you can see Venus in the sky right around dusk to going invisible right in the middle and disappearing for a week and then showing up again in the morning as morning star. So it's a metaphor, a time to put relationship drama and issues to bed, to really go introspect and then write a new love story for yourself. Um, you know, so if you do have a wedding plan between July 22nd and September 30, you don't have to call it off, but just make sure you, maybe, you, maybe you sign your certificate before. Renew I, your vows a year later. A year later. So, but it is like, there's relationships are also going to take 
work this year, but in a really creative, interesting way where we, you know, what if the purpose of relationships is just to enjoy each other? You know, like the, the energy of Libra and Leo is about fun and pleasure and romance and enjoyment. And maybe, you know, maybe it's about, maybe there'll be a rebirth of that as a result of it, you know? So let's see. Love Sorry, that. grinder. No, <laughs> awesome. I know, yeah. I know there are listeners. I know people are like, what's up with relationships? Yeah. Gonna be happening? I was like, we'd be remiss if we didn't. Well, talk. yeah. I mean, yeah. in 2022, so in 2021, we filmed the first ever astrology reality dating show, Cosmic Love, that you mentioned earlier. And that was very interesting because we worked with Amazon Prime in this huge budget production with like, you know, 300 people on a lot and 20 characters doing these, you know, it was was fascinating. Um, It had to be televisionized. So, but you did get a taste of astrology from it. And we did all the matchmaking of the people, the contestants that were cast and, you know, came up with the original premise of the show, although it it did get changed along the way as TV shows do. But um, out of that, we ended up deciding to write a book called Super Couple using a tool called the composite chart. Every chart, every relationship has its own chart as well. You take both people's uh, time, date, and place of birth, and they merge into an average. So that becomes the sun and the moon and the rising and everything of the relationship. So your readers may be, or your listeners may be interested in checking that out because it's it's the instruction manual that relationships come with. And if you're not in a relationship, you can use it with someone you might be getting serious with or to put perspective on a breakup or the one that got away or that like, oh, that's why we were like that together. And it's it's very healing to see mm. that. Like, okay, there was a reason that I was with this person. It's <laughs> waste five yeah. years of my life or whatever. Right, right, right. There is, well, and it's great for awareness and learning. That's fantastic. I will definitely, will add that information as well. I'm laughing because I I've been married to, I'm married now, but I had a, I was married before and both, both are Libras. So clearly something about that <laughs> works. It's just, you know, maybe different versions. I don't know. We yeah. dated a lot of Le- Sagittarius and Libra. It's just like, it's just an easy flow yeah. there, you know, just yeah. two mm-hmm. sides apart, you know, works and well. your super couple merging sign is Scorpio. So the, it's just, just a tendency to want to bond deeply, even though individually Sag and Libra are very sort of carefree. Like when they get together, it's like, you got to do something serious here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah. Love it. Super couple. I love that. All right. Should we dive into? Yeah. Fine. So this is, you know, I'm just going to say everyone, if you're listening, hopefully you're still listening, still with us. We, we love you. Thank you for, (laughs) this is the part where you're going to hear about your sun sign because we'll go through. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we looked at like what you wanted in 2022 versus what you're going to want to set your sights on in 2023. And while it's hard to sum up an entire year with one word, we did our best. So if you're an Aries, uh, in 2022, you wanted more independence. And in 2023, you're still going to want that, but you're, wanna, you're going to want to start to build towards security, especially the, the year for money and security through your passions and talents. Uh, for Taurus, in 2022, it's very transitional year, releasing the old. You wanted, you actually allowed and wanted more support instead of always being the provider for everybody. So, especially toward the second half of 2023, you're going to want more independence and freedom. Tauruses are starting this whole 12 year new chapter of their lives when Jupiter goes into their sign May 16th. So, really start paving a path to like, what can I let go of so that I can have this new freedom and fall back in love with my life? Mm. Um, Gemini's wanted more community. They were more social in 2022, big career year too. Um, And in 2023, they're going to want more solitude and reflection and introspection. You're going to have a less of a a why going wide with your friend circle and a desire to go deep, which is really healthy because Gemini's tend to keep things superficial, but they're really outgrowing that they're wanting the 
quality of the connections, um, which is healthy for them. Cancers in 2022 wanted more achievement. They, they got to be large and in charge, and it was really good for a lot of them, except for maybe the Cancerian Elon Musk, which was the train wreck we all watched. We, we have no control over how these planets play out, but he did follow <laughs> what was a, it was a lucky career year for them or a big career growth time, risk-taking time. I don't know how lucky it is anymore um, for him. <laughs> but um, in 2023, Cancer should move toward more teamwork. Like it's awesome. You prove that you can do it and be in charge of everything. Now start learning how to delegate. And that's going to be an incredible skill that keeps you out of your shell. Mm. You don't need to go hiding in there anymore. Leos wanted more adventure in 2022. They were really all about trying things, big, wide experimentation and relationships. Saturn was in the relationship house. So we saw J-Lo and Ben Affleck, two Leos yeah, as the yeah. poster couple for what happened to a lot of Leos in their relationships. I've heard of at least two or three Leos getting engaged this year too. Mm -hmm. So relationships are still going to be very important, but you're going to want more structure. It's going to be a very career driven kind of, you know, just like, all right, now I've got all this knowledge or insight or experience. How do I put it into something really concrete and specific? Um, Virgos wanted more connection in 2022. It wasn't the most exciting year you've ever had, but it was, they went deeper with people and they actually learned how to say no, which is a big deal for Virgos because they always want to be helpful. Don't always set the boundaries. So um, those boundaries that Virgos have been learning and are continuing to practice are going to lead to freedom in 2023, which, you know, a free Virgo, Virgos are, they get a bad rep as these boring data driven, you know, analysts, but they're actually very sensual, very creative. Beyonce is a Virgo. So, you know, they're just different. freedom <laughs> to experiment and share their gifts and travel too. Mm -hmm. um, for Libras, 2022 was a big year of partnership evolution. That's always a theme in Libra's lives. Um, but you learned independence within partnerships if you're a Libra because Jupiter was in Aries and will be still. Um, and now you're gonna learn how to still maintain your sense of autonomy and sovereignty, but with intimacy, whether that's in a business relationship, sharing money, sex, spirituality, it's like, how can you go even deeper? Because sometimes Libras will keep people at arm's length. They'll be there showing up, pleasing everyone, but still there's this like cool distance within. So they're gonna get more vulnerable and engaged and learn. There's a real opportunity to learn that you don't have to lose yourself just because you allow someone in and to see you not perfect. It was interesting, Kim Cart, not to you know mention these celebrities, but none of us can avoid them. So they become our storytellers of society. So Kim Kardashian, uh, being a Libra, I think it was the first time she's ever not been in a relationship since I've ever heard of her and her first sex mm -hmm. team, you know, so it was, that was what Libras were supposed to do. take a break, you know, don't just, yeah. So Scorpios, 2022 was a time, was kind of, well, the South node in your sign, like kind of pushed you underground. You've been in sort of a, a womb of sorts, an incubator. Um, and kind of getting all your routines and everything in order too. So it's sort of an administrative year, but also really like soul deep soul searching and releasing. And 2023 is going to move you more toward partnership and companionship, letting other people in. It's like, I feel like Scorpio is like, it's like you got nothing to lose. Speaking, you know, another pop culture Scorpio example is Pete Davidson, who dated Kim Kardashian. We know way more about him than we ever wanted to, <laughs> but <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he was kind of the poster child for the Scorpio being exposed, whether they wanted to or not. So, uh, <laughs> Sagittarius 2022 was a mix of like 
homebody and then fun and and glamour so it's like kind of like going in the cocoon and then coming out and then going back in a little bit at the end of the year and now it's back out and and kind of going into like show the world your colors again be out there and that and then later in the year more health and wellness and simplicity so it's it's a little bit of like taking care of yourself and just being fully self-expressed so um kind of fun. Sanchez always have kind of a sporty side that doesn't all, we love, we love a good feast, but we also like to move. So I think we'll be indulging in both of those things. Um, Capricorns 2022 was more kind of a little bit more a mix of like the same sort of similar to Sagittarius. Like you wanted some comfort and then you wanted fun and then you wanted, to, you know, so that, kind of switched places there, but 2023 is more, it's back into more excitement for you. Uh, opportunity in the first half of the year for home and family and a huge thing, Pluto, which has been in Capricorn since 2008, is gonna dip out for a couple of months, then it's gonna go away forever for the rest of your life in 2024. But there's, Capricorns have been to the 16 year almost metamorphosis and they are going to be done with that and get a little taste of those butterfly wings that they've gained in the last 15 years um aquarius 2022 you wanted you wanted more structure and authority saturn really you were like all right i surrender to the type a person that i have been in denial that has been in me so Aquarian, you know aquarians got kind of you know, stern in ways that we've never seen them, very organized and um, and clear about a lot of things, about their priorities and their values, um, which is also a, a rare thing for a lot of Aquarians. They tend to be scattered around. So 2023 will bring an opportunity to really flex those new leadership muscles, um, make new friendships and allow more support in, and, and to start like, uh, building a career path or financial, you know, saving money and getting more serious about your day-to-day -day routines and creating security. Funny for Aquarians, which is a very, there's such a nomadic sign, but it's, it's really a time like where you're going to want a few more roots again. Um, we're a community, not, a, not like to be isolated, but a, a go-to reliable community. Pisces uh, had a very interesting year too because Jupiter has been in and out of their sign in 2021 and 2022. It's it just left for good December 20th. The the co-rulers well, of Pisces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the co-rulers of Pisces, um, Neptune and Jupiter were both in Pisces. It's a once in a lifetime experience because Neptune takes a hundred over 150 years to come back around. So December, you know, and throughout 2022 and 2021, you experienced this really unusual moment. So a lot of Pisces were in the news for better or worse um, and trailblazing in a lot of ways. Now it's kind of time to explore your curiosity, um, start to build. You tried on all these different costumes and identities for Pisces. Now it's time to like Look at what you can, how you can monetize some of that, some of your passions into a career path, mm -hmm. and then find some kindred spirits too. So, yeah. Come back into that's, the world. And that's the Zodiac. Folks. That is the Zodiac in a nutshell. <laughs> so. Wow, that was awesome. And I'm just telling you, my lovely listener, I will put these in the notes. And okay. I know and then I know you have, you know, you guys have written a book. You have so many, so many great resources. I, the, we have to do this again. And I'm definitely ah. like, I, I want to do like mid-year check-ins. <laughs> yeah, those are I'm great like, to do. Oh, this is so, it's really, um, you know, it, 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 there's comfort in this. And there's also, uh, like you hear with every sign, with everything you're saying, there's an opportunity to grow, to learn, to expand awareness, consciousness. Mm -hmm. And to be connected, you know, we are connected to these planets, to the moon, to the sun. We are of that uh, realm. And I'm just so grateful 
to hear, there's just so much wisdom that was dropped. I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my, I, I, I feel so full. Like there's just, I always like to end with my question is it's, I call them heart flares where there's mm-hmm. something your heart or that's maybe I didn't ask you or just, you know, anything that, that's there in your heart that you want to share each of you, um, about yeah. the year to come or astrology or anything you're just feeling intuitively would be helpful for all of our amazing, beautiful listeners. I love yeah. the concept of the heart flare. That's, That's great. So, really sweet. So you know, Aries think, moon. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I think for me, uh, there's a heart flare. It's like, okay, don't get overwhelmed. You know, it is a bit, it really is an overwhelming time in history because even though we've all, we've faced challenges, we always do as humanity. It's like, we're also being spun up with a lot of anxiety. And so just know that, you know, you know, the choice of what if is to, you can either use it to enervate and spin into an anxiety or innovate and like come up with something new and just, it's okay if you move back and forth between those states, like you can anticipate that there will be anxiety and trying to vanquish that. It should not be the goal, but rather to trans learn how to transmute it, pause and just create something like get yourself to center and then create from there rather than being emotionally reactive, you know, and, it, and that if you can just learn some emotional regulation and a little time out that that pause between stimulus and response is going to be so important in 2023. And it's probably going to be the saving grace, you know, and no, I shouldn't add to that comment thread. No, I should, you know, it doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything, but I'm going to think and pause and take that breath. It's okay to, it's actually wise to do that in the year ahead, even though there'll be a lot of impulsive energy flying around. Yeah. That's my heart flare. (laughs) I love it, Holly. That's really, really wise. And that could look like unfollowing someone that, that just doesn't feel good to you energetically, or, you know, it might be not saying something or saying something, but getting clear first, pausing. I love that reminder to pause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My heart flare is I feel uh, inspired to invite your listeners uh, to just look at astrology as something that's, you know, you can eat it one bite at a time. And one of the things we're doing in 2023 is a companion kind of online coaching meets meetup club, whatever you want to call it. To go along with the book, we're calling it Launchpad, and we're going to meet quarterly with people to help digest the book and plan. So we're going to focus in, we're going to zoom in on a quarter and what those key transits in the planets are and help you find your focus for that specific time so that you have the sense that you're achieving something. I thought of it when you said mid-year, because we're going to meet four times a year. Go, okay, here's the container now, here are the available cosmic energies. You can read all about it in the book, but let's work on it a little bit together and set you into action in a way that you feel like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm putting my energy. Because when they say energy goes where intention flows or flows where intent, whatever. I'm energy energy flows, flows where attention goes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mess up the quote, there you go. but I won't. <laughs> yeah. But the process, I won't okay. mess up. So um, yeah, so that's something that we'll, you know, we can give you a link for the show notes for people that want to, that are intrigued and want to, learn how to do this, but not, but feel like, how will I ever learn it? We're Mm. here to make it practical in your life. Amazing. Oh my goodness. I, I just, I think back to where you were in college at Michigan when, you know, just following the thread. And and I always say, I'm so grateful, both of you stepping into your USU so we can each really, I mean, we, we get to benefit and learn and grow because, because you did that, because you're doing that. And to me, that's what it's about. This is, this is such beautiful, helpful, really grounded information. I'm going to make sure we get all the links because there's so many <laughs> options here. And I just, I love you both ladies. I, I Aww, love, love you too, yes, sister. <laughs> yes. Yes. Really got to do this again. I, I, I have a feeling people are going to be writing in like, 
Okay, update. We need an update. Claire, yeah, we're, we're here. here. We're yeah, sure. we it's would love to. There's a lot to say when you're talking about the year ahead. Oh my God, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, it can be a little overwhelming, but if, you know, our 2023 horoscope book breaks it all down to if people are interested in wanting to read more, it's like, yeah. you know, it's okay. It can feel overwhelming, but you know what? People do learn the system and they learn it faster and faster. You can get it. You don't have to have any mystical gifts to learn astrology. Anyone can. You just have to be patient and take it mm. one bit, one planet at a time. So be willing to say what if from an innovative, curious place. Yeah, mm. pretty much. What if you could learn astrology in 2023? Right. What if? Ooh, love it. <laughs> And it's an ancient, you know, this is ancient wisdom, which I love about astrology. This is not just, you know, right, this, this goes way back. Um, and I love that. What if, so there you go. What if you could learn astrology? Right. Or what if, yeah. What if this is the year that you really step into your full self, your self-expression, you know, let's use it that way. I love, I love that focus. Love it. Mm-hmm. The cosmic you is you. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having us. It was great to do this. We can't wait to come back and talk some more about the stars and the sun and the moon and all that good stuff. <laughs> I love it. Well, I want to thank you both. And I want to thank you, my beloved listener. I love that. May you be your cosmic you is you this year and ask what if from a place of a generative, life-giving, appreciative possibility lens so we will, I will do my best to bring back Opie and Tali. And again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you as always for being part of this community. Lots of love.